I woke up to the sound of birds chirping outside my window, a familiar melody that greeted me every morning. As I stretched and rubbed the sleep from my eyes, I glanced at the clock on my bedside table. It was 6 a.m., time to start another day as a park ranger in Point Pleasant at West Virginia. Slipping into my uniform, I prepared myself for the day ahead, the routine of my job grounding me in a sense of purpose. Stepping outside, I breathed in the crisp morning air, the scent of pine and earth filling my lungs. The forest stretched out before me, a vast expanse of greenery and tranquility that I had grown to love. Making my way to the ranger station, I greeted my colleagues with a nod and a smile, exchanging small talk as we prepared for the day's tasks. The park was our domain, and it was our responsibility to ensure the safety of its visitors and the preservation of its natural beauty. As I patrolled the trails, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. There had been reports of strange occurrences in the woods lately, sightings of a creature lurking in the shadows. Though I tried to dismiss them as mere superstition, a nagging sense of unease lingered at the back of my mind, like a shadow waiting to be revealed. Despite the whispers of fear that echoed through the town, life in Point Pleasant continued as usual. The locals went about their daily routines, unaware of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of the forest. But for me, the sense of foreboding only grew stronger with each passing day, a silent warning that danger was closing in. As I patrolled the trails, my attention was drawn to a peculiar sight. The lifeless bodies of several woodland creatures strewn along the path. Squirrels, rabbits, even a deer, all mutilated in a gruesome manner. My heart quickened with unease as I knelt beside them, examining the torn flesh and mangled limbs. This was no ordinary predator's work. Something sinister was at play in the heart of the forest. The hairs on the back of my neck prickled with a growing sense of dread, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. But by what, or whom, I couldn't say. Determined to uncover the truth behind the gruesome discoveries in the forest, I embarked on a relentless quest for answers. I combed through old records and folklore, searching for any mention of similar incidents in Point Pleasant's history. Yet, the more I delved into the past, the more elusive the truth became. It was as if the forest itself held its secrets close, refusing to yield to my inquiries. Frustration gnawed at the edges of my resolve, but I refused to give up. Whatever was lurking in the shadows needed to be stopped, and I would not rest until I had found a way to confront it head-on. As I continued my investigation, I encountered one obstacle after another, each more formidable than the last. Skeptical townsfolk dismissed my concerns as nonsense, unwilling to entertain the possibility of a supernatural threat lurking in their midst. Even my fellow rangers, loyal though they were, questioned my judgment, urging me to focus on more pressing matters. But I couldn't shake the feeling that time was running out, that with each passing day, the danger grew ever closer. I pressed on, determined to prove them wrong and uncover the truth, no matter the cost. In my search for answers, I sought out the wisdom of those who had long called the forest their home. I visited local hermits and wise women, hoping to glean insights from their ancient knowledge. Yet, their cryptic warnings only served to deepen the mystery, leaving me with more questions than answers. It seemed that even those who claimed to understand the ways of the forest were wary of delving too deeply into its secrets. But I refused to be deterred, clinging to the hope that somewhere, amidst the whispers of the wind and the rustle of leaves, I would find the key to unlocking the truth. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself drawn deeper into the heart of the forest, guided by an instinctual pull that I couldn't quite explain. It was as if the forest itself was calling out to me, urging me to uncover its hidden truths. Yet, with each step I took, the air grew thicker with tension, and the sense of unease that had plagued me from the start only intensified. 
It was as if I had crossed into another realm entirely, where the laws of nature no longer applied, and the boundaries between reality and nightmare blurred beyond recognition. But still, I pressed on, driven by a fierce determination to confront the darkness that lurked within. As I ventured deeper into the heart of the forest, the atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive, the air heavy with the weight of unseen eyes watching my every move. Strange sounds echoed through the trees, whispers carried on the wind that seemed to speak of ancient secrets and forgotten horrors. My senses were on high alert, every rustle of leaves and snap of twigs sending a shiver down my spine. Yet, despite the growing sense of unease, I pressed on, driven by a determination to uncover the truth no matter the cost. It was during one of my late-night patrols that I encountered something truly unexpected. A figure lurking in the shadows, its form shrouded in darkness. My heart raced as I drew closer, the sense of foreboding that had gripped me since the beginning of my journey reaching a fever pitch. But as the figure stepped into the moonlight, I recoiled in horror at what I saw. It was the Mothman, its monstrous form towering over me, its glowing red eyes boring into my very soul. In that moment, I realized that the danger I had been searching for had been lurking in the shadows all along, waiting for the perfect moment to reveal itself. With a sense of dread gnawing at my insides, I knew that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I had ever imagined. The Mothman's presence seemed to warp reality itself, casting a dark shadow over the once serene forest. I tried to make sense of what I was seeing, to rationalize it away as a trick of the light or a figment of my imagination. But deep down, I knew the truth. The Mothman was real, and it posed a threat unlike anything I had ever encountered before. As I stood face to face with the Mothman, I felt a surge of adrenaline course through my veins, my survival instincts kicking into overdrive. I knew that I had to act fast if I wanted to escape with my life intact. But as I turned to flee, my foot slipped on a moss-covered rock sending me tumbling to the ground with a sickening thud. Pain shot through my body as I struggled to regain my footing, my mind racing with thoughts of the horrors that awaited me if I didn't make it out of the forest alive. But even in the face of overwhelming fear, I refused to give up hope. With every ounce of strength I had left, I pushed myself to keep moving, knowing that my only chance at survival lay in escaping the clutches of the Mothman and the darkness that surrounded it. As I struggled to my feet, pain shooting through my ankle, I knew I faced a critical choice. The Mothman loomed before me, its presence suffocating, its red eyes piercing through the darkness. Fear threatened to paralyze me, but I forced myself to focus to think clearly despite the panic coursing through my veins. I had to make a decision, and it had to be the right one if I had any hope of surviving this nightmare. With a deep breath, I weighed my options, each one more daunting than the last. I could try to reason with the Mothman, to appeal to whatever shred of humanity still remained within its monstrous form. But deep down, I knew that reason had no place in the heart of darkness that had consumed it. My only other choice was to run, to flee into the night and pray that I could outpace the creature that hunted me. But even as the thought crossed my mind, I knew it was a futile gesture, a desperate bid for survival in a world where the odds were stacked against me. In the end, there was only one choice that made sense. To confront the Mothman head-on, to stand my ground and fight for my life with every ounce of strength I had left. It was a decision born out of desperation, fueled by the primal instinct to survive at all costs. But as I squared my shoulders and met the creature's gaze with steely determination, I knew that there was no turning back. The die had been cast, and my fate was sealed. Whether I emerged from this encounter victorious or succumb to the darkness that threatened to consume me, only time would tell. But one thing was certain, I would not go down without a fight. With a primal roar, 
The Mothman lunged forward, its massive wings unfurling as it prepared to strike. Adrenaline surged through my veins as I braced myself for the onslaught, every fiber of my being screaming for survival. I dodged to the side, narrowly avoiding the creature's razor-sharp claws as they sliced through the air where I had been standing moments before. I knew that I couldn't hope to defeat the Mothman in a direct confrontation, but I refused to back down. With a fierce determination, I launched myself at the creature, driving my shoulder into its midsection with all the force I could muster. The impact sent the Mothman stumbling backward, its unearthly screech echoing through the night as it struggled to regain its balance. For a moment, the forest seemed to hold its breath as the two of us locked eyes, locked in a battle of wills that would determine the outcome of our deadly dance. With each passing second, the tension mounted, the air crackling with the energy of impending doom. But I refused to be cowed by the creature's terrifying presence, drawing strength from the depths of my soul as I prepared to face whatever fate had in store for me. As the dust settled and the echoes of our battle faded into the night, I surveyed the aftermath of our confrontation. The forest lay silent and still, the only sound the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze. The Mothman was nowhere to be seen, vanishing into the darkness as mysteriously as it had appeared. Exhausted and battered, I sank to my knees, the weight of what had transpired finally catching up to me. My body throbbed with pain, every muscle screaming in protest as I struggled to catch my breath. But despite the physical toll, I felt a sense of peace wash over me, a quiet acceptance of the events that had unfolded. In that moment of stillness, I knew that my world would never be the same again. The encounter with the Mothman had changed me in ways I couldn't fully comprehend, leaving behind scars that would never fully heal. But as I gazed up at the star-strewn sky above, I felt a flicker of hope ignite within me. Though the darkness had threatened to consume me, I had emerged from the shadows stronger and more resilient than ever before. And as I rose to my feet, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, I knew that I would carry the memory of this night with me always, a testament to the power of the human spirit to endure, even in the face of unspeakable horror. As the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, casting long shadows across the forest floor, I knew that my journey was far from over. The encounter with the Mothman had left its mark on me, body and soul, but I refused to let fear dictate my future. With each step I took, I felt a renewed sense of purpose coursing through my veins, a determination to protect the natural world from the darkness that threatened to consume it. Though the Mothman had vanished into the night, I knew that it would only be a matter of time before it returned, thirsting for revenge. But I was ready. Armed with the knowledge and strength gained from my harrowing encounter, I vowed to stand as a guardian of the forest, a beacon of light in the face of encroaching darkness. And as I disappeared into the depths of the forest, my footsteps echoing in the quiet stillness of the morning, I knew that my journey was far from over. For though the Mothman may have been defeated for now, the true battle had only just begun. But I was ready, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and determination, knowing that as long as I stood firm in my convictions, the light would always prevail over the darkness. I wake up to the familiar sound of birds chirping outside my cabin in the heart of northern Minnesota. The crisp morning air fills my lungs as I stretch and prepare for another day as a forest ranger. My name is Jack, and at 37 years old, this remote wilderness has become my home. I slip into my ranger uniform, the green fabric weathered from years of patrolling these vast forests. As I sip my morning coffee, I review my daily duties in my mind, a routine I've grown accustomed to over the years. My days are spent ensuring the safety of wildlife and visitors, a responsibility I take pride in, 
Outside, the towering pines stand sentinel, their branches swaying gently in the breeze. The forest stretches out before me, a vast expanse of greenery that seems to go on forever. This place is my sanctuary, my refuge from the chaos of the outside world. Yet, even in its tranquility, there's an underlying sense of mystery and unease that lurks beneath the surface. Among the towering trees and winding trails, I've forged relationships with my fellow rangers, a tight-knit community bound by a shared love for this land. We rely on each other for support and camaraderie, our bond strengthened by the challenges we face together. There's Sarah, the seasoned veteran who's seen it all, and Mike, the eager rookie with a passion for the outdoors. Together, we patrol these woods, our watchful eyes scanning for any signs of trouble. As I set out on my morning patrol, I can't shake the feeling that something is amiss in the forest. It's a subtle shift in the air, a whisper of unease that sends a shiver down my spine. I brush it off as nerves, chalking it up to the isolation of these remote woods. But deep down, I know there's more to it than that. There's a darkness lurking in the shadows, waiting to be uncovered. And I can't help but feel that I'm on the cusp of something ominous. As I continue my patrol through the dense undergrowth, a strange sensation washes over me, a feeling of being watched. I brush it off as paranoia at first, but the prickling at the back of my neck refuses to fade. Suddenly, a rustling in the bushes ahead snaps me out of my reverie. My hand instinctively reaches for the revolver at my hip as I cautiously approach the source of the disturbance. Heart pounding, I push aside the branches to reveal a clearing bathed in dappled sunlight. But something is wrong. There, in the center of the clearing, lies a tattered backpack, its contents strewn haphazardly across the forest floor. My mind races as I survey the scene, searching for any sign of the backpack's owner. But there's nothing, no trace of human presence, no clue as to what could have caused this eerie disturbance. A chill runs down my spine as I realize the gravity of the situation. This isn't just a simple case of a lost hiker or a careless camper. Something sinister is at play here, something beyond the realm of comprehension. I can feel it in my bones, a primal instinct warning me to tread carefully. With a sense of foreboding, I scoop up the scattered belongings and make my way back to the ranger station. As I relay the details of my discovery to Sarah and Mike, their expressions mirror my own growing unease. We may not know what we're up against, but one thing is clear. Our peaceful existence in these woods is about to be shattered by forces beyond our control. And I can't shake the feeling that this is only the beginning. Determined to unravel the mystery behind the unsettling discovery in the woods, I embark on a relentless quest for answers. My days blur into nights as I scour the vast expanse of the forest, searching for any clue that might shed light on the sinister forces at play. With each step, I can feel the weight of the unknown pressing down on me, urging me forward into the heart of darkness. But my efforts are met with frustration at every turn. Dead ends and false leads taunt me at every corner, leaving me no closer to understanding the true nature of the threat we face. As I delve deeper into the labyrinth of secrets that shroud these woods, I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched, that every move I make is being scrutinized by unseen eyes. Despite the obstacles that stand in my way, I refuse to give up hope. With Sarah and Mike by my side, we form an unlikely alliance against the encroaching darkness. Our bond strengthens with each passing day, a beacon of light in the ever-growing shadow that threatens to consume us. As we push deeper into the unknown, new revelations come to light, each more chilling than the last. Ancient legends speak of a creature known as the Wendigo, a malevolent spirit that feeds on human flesh and preys on the souls of the innocent. Could it be possible that this mythical beast is responsible for the disappearances that plague our forest? With this newfound knowledge, 
Our resolve is hardened, our determination unwavering. We may be walking into the jaws of death, but we refuse to back down. For the sake of those who have vanished without a trace, we will confront the darkness head-on, no matter the cost. As night falls over the forest, casting long shadows that seem to dance with malevolent intent, I find myself facing a new, unexpected challenge. Sarah and Mike, my steadfast companions in this harrowing journey, have vanished without a trace. Panic surges through me as I search frantically for any sign of their whereabouts, but the dense foliage offers no answers, only darkness. Alone and vulnerable, I press on. My senses heighten to the slightest whisper of movement in the underbrush. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sends a jolt of fear coursing through my veins. It's as if the forest itself is alive, a malevolent entity that seeks to consume me whole. With each step I take, I can feel the presence of something sinister lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. Shadows flit through the trees, their movements fluid and unnatural. I clutch the revolver at my hip, my only weapon against the unknown horrors that surround me. But just as I begin to lose hope, a faint glimmer of light pierces the darkness ahead. Heart pounding, I follow the faint trail of illumination, praying that it leads me to my missing comrades. As I draw closer, the source of the light comes into view a small clearing bathed in an otherworldly glow. And there, standing in the center of the clearing, is Sarah. But something is terribly wrong. Her eyes, once bright with determination, now shine with an unnatural gleam. She beckons to me with a crooked finger, her voice a haunting whisper on the wind. Join us, she urges, her words sending a chill down my spine. Join us in the darkness. As I stand frozen in the eerie glow of the clearing, Sarah's haunting words echo in my mind, urging me to join her in the darkness. Fear and uncertainty grip me like icy tendrils, threatening to paralyze me where I stand. But deep down, a flicker of determination ignites within me, driving me to resist the sinister pull of whatever force has ensnared my friend. With trembling hands, I raise my revolver, its weight a comforting presence against the encroaching darkness. I steel myself against the overwhelming sense of dread that threatens to consume me, knowing that the fate of Sarah and Mike, and perhaps even my own soul, hangs in the balance. But as I take a step forward, a voice whispers in the depths of my mind, a voice that speaks of doubt and uncertainty. What if Sarah is right? What if the only way to save them is to succumb to the darkness myself? The thought sends a shiver down my spine, but I push it aside, knowing that I cannot abandon my principles in the face of such temptation. With a deep breath, I steel myself for the battle ahead, knowing that the choice I make in this moment will determine the fate of us all. I will not let fear dictate my actions, nor will I allow myself to be swayed by the promises of an unknown evil. With resolve hardening in my heart, I step into the clearing, ready to confront whatever horrors await me. As I step further into the clearing, the air grows thick with an oppressive darkness that seems to suffocate me. Shadows twist and writhe around me, coalescing into a sinister figure that looms before me, a grotesque creature with icy blue skin stretched taut over its skeletal frame. The Wendigo. My heart pounds in my chest as I raise my revolver, the weight of it a comforting anchor in the face of unspeakable terror. The Wendigo's eyes gleam with malevolent hunger, its shrill cries piercing the silence of the night. Every fiber of my being screams at me to flee, to abandon all hope and retreat into the safety of the forest. But I know that I cannot turn back now, not when the lives of Sarah, Mike, and countless others hang in the balance. With a primal roar, the Wendigo lunges forward, its claws slashing through the air with deadly precision. I dodge and weave, narrowly avoiding its savage attacks as adrenaline courses through my veins. 
I can feel the heat of its breath on my skin, smell the putrid stench of decay that surrounds it, but I refuse to yield to fear. With a steady hand and unwavering resolve, I take aim and unleash a barrage of gunfire upon the creature, each shot ringing out like a thunderclap in the darkness. The Wendigo staggers back, wounded but far from defeated. It snarls and hisses, its unearthly cries filling the night with a cacophony of horror. But I refuse to back down. With every ounce of strength and courage I possess, I continue to fight, determined to protect those I hold dear from the monstrous abomination that threatens to consume us all. For in the heart of this darkness, I know that there lies a glimmer of hope, a beacon of light that refuses to be extinguished. And with that knowledge burning bright within me, I face the final showdown with the Wendigo, ready to fight until my last breath. As the echoes of gunfire fade into the night, a heavy silence descends upon the clearing, broken only by the ragged breaths that escape my lips. The Wendigo lies motionless at my feet, its once terrifying visage now reduced to a grotesque heap of twisted limbs and matted fur. Relief floods through me, mingled with a bone-deep weariness that threatens to pull me under. But even as I stand victorious over the fallen creature, a sense of unease gnaws at the edges of my consciousness. The forest around me seems to pulse with a malevolent energy, as if mourning the loss of one of its own. And in the distance, I can hear the faint whispers of something lurking in the shadows, waiting to take its place. With a heavy heart, I turn away from the scene of the battle and begin the long journey back to the ranger station. The weight of what I've witnessed hangs heavy on my shoulders, a burden I know I'll carry with me for the rest of my days. But despite the horrors I've faced, I refuse to let them break me. For in the heart of this darkness, I found a strength I never knew I possessed, a resilience that will carry me through whatever trials lie ahead. As I emerge from the depths of the forest and into the welcoming glow of the ranger station, I'm greeted by the familiar faces of my comrades. Relief floods through me at the sight of Sarah and Mike, alive and unharmed, their eyes filled with gratitude and awe. We may have emerged from this ordeal battered and bruised, but we've emerged stronger than ever, bound together by a shared experience that has forged us into a formidable team. With a newfound sense of purpose, we set about the task of rebuilding our lives and our community, knowing that the horrors we faced have only strengthened our resolve to protect this wilderness we call home. And as the sun rises on a new day, casting its golden light upon the land, I know that whatever challenges lie ahead, we'll face them together, united in our determination to keep the darkness at bay. As the days pass, life in the forest gradually returns to a semblance of normalcy. The memory of our harrowing encounter with the Wendigo fades into the background, replaced by the everyday rhythms of our duties as forest rangers. But beneath the surface, I can still feel the lingering presence of the darkness that once threatened to consume us. Sarah, Mike, and I have grown closer in the wake of our shared ordeal, our bond forged in the crucible of adversity. Together, we patrol the woods with renewed determination, ever vigilant for signs of danger lurking in the shadows. But despite our best efforts to move on, there's a part of me that knows the darkness will never truly be vanquished. As I gaze out at the vast expanse of the forest, I can't help but wonder what other horrors lie waiting in the depths of the wilderness. The Wendigo may be gone, but its legend lives on, a reminder of the fragile line between light and darkness that we tread each day. And though I may never fully understand the mysteries that shroud these woods, I know that as long as I have my comrades by my side, I'll face whatever comes our way with courage and resolve. For in the end, it's not the monsters that lurk in the shadows that define us, but the strength and resilience we find within ourselves in the face of adversity. And as I stand beneath the canopy of ancient trees, I know that no matter what the future may hold, I'll always be ready to confront it head-on, armed with the knowledge that together, 
we can overcome even the darkest of nightmares. I wake up to the gentle glow of the rising sun, casting warm hues across the walls of my humble home on the Navajo Reservation. Stretching my limbs, I prepare for another day of tending to the animals that roam our lands. It's a routine I've grown accustomed to, a rhythm that beats in harmony with the desert's heartbeat. As I sip my morning coffee, the familiar scent of sage dances through the air, wrapping me in a cocoon of comfort. My days are spent in the company of loyal companions, both human and animal, each holding a piece of my heart. Among them, my grandmother's aged dog, Shadow, stands as a silent sentinel, a constant reminder of the ties that bind me to this land. Outside, the vast expanse of the reservation stretches out before me, a patchwork of mesas and canyons bathed in the golden light of dawn. In the distance, the ancient ruins of a pueblo stand as a testament to the resilience of my people their spirits whispering secrets of generations past. It's a landscape steeped in history and tradition, where every rock and crevice holds a story waiting to be told. As I make my way to the clinic, greeting familiar faces along the way, I can't shake the feeling that something lurks just beyond the horizon, a shadow creeping ever closer with each passing day. Among the faces I encounter is that of Thomas, an elder of the tribe whose weathered features betray a wisdom earned through years of hardship. His gaze lingers on me for a moment too long, a silent warning that sends shivers down my spine. I brush off the unease, chalking it up to the superstitions of an older generation, but deep down, I know there's truth in his words. The air crackles with tension, a palpable energy that hangs heavy in the desert air. I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched, that eyes unseen follow my every move with a hunger that sends a chill down my spine. As I tend to the animals in my care, I notice subtle changes in their behavior, a restlessness that mirrors my own. Dogs bark at unseen foes, their hackles raised in silent warning, while the cattle graze nervously, casting wary glances at the horizon. It's as if they sense the looming threat that lurks just beyond our doorstep, a darkness that threatens to swallow us whole. But try as I might, I can't shake the feeling of impending doom that hangs over us like a shroud. Night falls like a heavy blanket, cloaking the reservation in darkness as the stars twinkle overhead. I find solace in the warmth of my home, surrounded by the comforting embrace of family and friends. But even in the safety of these familiar walls, I can't escape the feeling of dread that gnaws at my insides. It's as if the very air crackles with an otherworldly energy, a malevolent force that seeks to tear apart the fabric of our reality. And as I drift off to sleep, haunted by visions of twisted shadows dancing in the moonlight, I know that our lives will never be the same again. As I make my rounds at the clinic, a frantic call jolts me from my routine. Mrs. Yazzie, a longtime resident of the reservation, pleads for my help, her voice trembling with fear. Rushing to her home, I find her beloved dog, Thunder, lying motionless on the ground, his eyes staring blankly into the distance. Panic grips my heart as I search for signs of life, but it's too late. Thunder is gone his life snuffed out by some unseen force. As I console Mrs. Yazzie through her tears, a chill runs down my spine. This isn't the first time I've encountered death on the reservation, but something about Thunder's passing feels different, as if a dark shadow has descended upon us all. Returning home, I find myself unable to shake the image of Thunder's lifeless body from my mind. Questions swirl in my head, each one more ominous than the last. What could have caused such a sudden and mysterious death? And why do I sense a presence lurking in the shadows, watching, waiting? The air feels heavy with foreboding, as if the very earth itself is holding its breath in anticipation of what's to come. As night falls, I find sleep elusive, 
my mind consumed by thoughts of thunder and the unknown threat that looms over us. In the darkness, strange noises echo through the desert, sending shivers down my spine. It's as if the land itself is alive with malevolence, whispering secrets that I dare not comprehend. And as I lie awake, listening to the eerie symphony of the night, I can't help but wonder what other horrors await us in the days to come. The next morning, I wake to find the reservation shrouded in an eerie silence, broken only by the distant howl of a coyote. It's as if the world itself is holding its breath, waiting for the next shoe to drop. With a sense of unease gnawing at my insides, I steel myself for what lies ahead. Whatever is out there, whatever darkness lurks in the shadows, I know that I must confront it head-on. For the sake of my community, and for the memory of thunder, I will not rest until the truth is revealed. Determined to unravel the mystery shrouding the reservation, I delve into the depths of Navajo folklore, seeking answers that may lie buried in the annals of time. With each dusty tome I pour over, I unearth whispers of ancient evils and forbidden rituals, each page a testament to the darkness that lurks just beyond the veil of our reality. But as I delve deeper into the labyrinth of legends, I find myself ensnared in a web of deceit and half-truths, my quest for knowledge leading me down paths fraught with danger. As I navigate the treacherous terrain of the supernatural, I encounter resistance at every turn. The elders of the tribe, wary of meddling with forces beyond their understanding, offer cryptic warnings that only serve to fuel my determination. But even as I face their skepticism, I find solace in the support of those who believe in my cause. Among them is my childhood friend, Michael, whose unwavering loyalty serves as a beacon of hope in the darkness that threatens to consume us. Together, Michael and I embark on a journey into the heart of the reservation, following a trail of breadcrumbs that leads us ever closer to the truth. Along the way, we encounter obstacles that test the limits of our resolve, from ancient wards that guard hidden truths to malevolent spirits that seek to drive us mad with fear. But with each challenge we overcome, our bond grows stronger, forging an unbreakable alliance in the face of overwhelming odds. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the reservation, I uncover secrets that shake me to my core. The Skinwalker, a shape-shifting demon from the depths of hell itself, has been unleashed upon our land, its insatiable hunger driving it to commit unspeakable atrocities. But even as I grapple with the enormity of the threat we face, I refuse to succumb to despair. With Michael by my side, I vow to banish the darkness that has taken root in our home, no matter the cost. As Michael and I press on through the desert, a sense of unease settles over us like a suffocating blanket. The sun beats down mercilessly, casting long shadows that seem to dance with malicious intent. With every step we take, the sand shifts beneath our feet, as if the very earth itself is conspiring to thwart our progress. But despite the oppressive heat and the ever-present sense of danger, we press on, driven by a shared determination to confront the darkness that lurks at the heart of the reservation. As we journey deeper into the desert, we encounter signs of the skinwalker's presence at every turn. Animal carcasses litter the ground, their lifeless eyes staring accusingly at us, as if to warn us of the fate that awaits. But even as the stench of death fills the air, I refuse to falter. My resolve strengthened by the memory of thunder and the countless other innocents who have fallen victim to the creature's insatiable hunger. But just as we begin to believe we are closing in on our quarry, we are blindsided by an unexpected twist that threatens to derail our mission. A sudden sandstorm engulfs us in a swirling vortex of dust and debris, obscuring our vision and disorienting our senses. As we struggle to find our bearings in the midst of the chaos, I feel a cold hand close around my heart, a chill that penetrates to my very core. It's as if the very elements themselves are conspiring to keep us from our goal, 
throwing obstacle after obstacle in our path with cruel indifference. But even as we battle against the elements, a more insidious threat lurks in the shadows, biding its time until the perfect moment to strike. For unbeknownst to us, we are not alone in the desert. A rival faction, driven by greed and lust for power, seeks to harness the Skinwalker's dark energies for their own twisted purposes. And as the storm rages on around us, I realize with a sinking heart that our true enemies may be closer than we ever dared to imagine. As the sandstorm rages around us, Michael and I find ourselves at a crossroads, faced with a decision that will shape the course of our journey. With each passing moment, the darkness closes in, threatening to swallow us whole if we falter in our resolve. But as we stand on the brink of uncertainty, I feel a surge of determination coursing through my veins, driving me to confront the demons that haunt us. With gritted teeth and clenched fists, I turn to Michael, my voice steady despite the tumultuous winds that threaten to drown out our words. We can't let them win, I say, my words a rallying cry against the encroaching darkness. We have to push forward, no matter the cost. But even as I speak the words aloud, doubt gnaws at the edges of my resolve, whispering insidious lies that sow seeds of discord in my mind. What if we are playing right into the hands of our enemies? What if our actions only serve to hasten our own demise? The weight of the decision bears down on me like a heavy burden, threatening to crush me beneath its weight. But in the end, I know that there is no turning back. With a silent nod of agreement, Michael and I steel ourselves for the trials that lie ahead. Our hearts beating as one in the face of adversity. For better or for worse, we have made our choice, and now we must face the consequences head-on, no matter what horrors await us on the other side. With determination burning in our hearts, Michael and I press onward through the relentless storm, our footsteps echoing in the desolate landscape. Each gust of wind feels like a sinister whisper, urging us to turn back before it's too late. But we refuse to heed its call, driven by a fierce resolve to confront the evil that lurks at the heart of the reservation. As we near our destination, a sense of dread washes over me like a tidal wave, threatening to engulf me in its icy grip. The air crackles with energy, charged with the promise of impending doom. And then, suddenly, we see it. A shadowy figure looming in the distance, its form twisted and grotesque, a chilling reminder of the horrors that await us. With a steely glint in his eye, Michael brandishes his weapon, ready to face our foe head-on. But even as he prepares for battle, I can't shake the feeling that we are hopelessly outmatched, mere mortals standing against a force beyond comprehension. And yet, despite the odds stacked against us, I refuse to back down. For Thunder, for Mrs. Yazzie, for all those who have fallen victim to the Skinwalker's insatiable hunger, we will fight until our last breath. As the creature lurches forward, its eyes blazing with hatred, a primal fear grips me, threatening to paralyze me with its icy touch. But I push past the terror, channeling every ounce of strength and courage within me. With a roar that echoes across the desert, we charge forward, steeling ourselves for the battle that lies ahead. And as the clash of steel and claws fills the air, I know that this is it, the moment we've been waiting for, the culmination of everything we've endured. With every strike, every blow exchanged, I feel a flicker of hope ignite within me, a spark of defiance that refuses to be extinguished. And as the battle rages on, I draw upon reserves of strength I never knew I possessed, pushing myself beyond the limits of endurance. But even as victory seems within reach, I know that the true test lies ahead, the final showdown that will determine the fate of the reservation and all who call it home. As the dust settles and the echoes of battle fade into the desert night, I find myself standing amidst the wreckage of our confrontation, my breath ragged and labored. Around me, 
the land lies scarred and broken, a silent testament to the violence that has unfolded here. But amidst the destruction, there is a sense of quietude, a calm that settles over the reservation like a blanket of peace. With trembling hands, I reach out to Michael, my voice hoarse with emotion as I offer him a word of thanks. Together, we have faced the darkness and emerged victorious, our bond stronger than ever in the wake of our shared ordeal. But even as I celebrate our triumph, I cannot shake the feeling of emptiness that lingers in the depths of my soul. For though the Skinwalker has been vanquished, its legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those who witnessed its reign of terror. The scars it has left behind run deep, a reminder of the fragility of life and the horrors that lurk just beyond the veil of our reality. But even in the face of such darkness, there is hope, a flickering flame that refuses to be extinguished. As dawn breaks over the horizon, casting its golden rays across the desert landscape, I find solace in the beauty of the world around me. Though the road ahead may be fraught with uncertainty, I know that I am not alone. With the support of my friends and the strength of my convictions, I will continue to fight for justice and protect those who cannot protect themselves. And as I look towards the future, I do so with a renewed sense of purpose, knowing that no matter what challenges lie ahead, I will face them head on, armed with the knowledge that even in the darkest of times, there is always light to guide the way. As the sun sets on the Navajo reservation, casting long shadows across the arid landscape, I find myself standing at the crossroads of the past and the future. The events of the past few days have left their mark on me, etching themselves into the fabric of my being like scars that will never fully heal. But amidst the chaos and turmoil, there is a sense of peace, a quietude that settles over the land like a benediction. With a heavy heart, I bid farewell to Michael and the others who have stood by my side through thick and thin, their presence a beacon of light in the darkness that has enveloped us. Though our paths may diverge, our bond remains unbreakable, forged in the crucible of adversity. And as I watch them disappear into the fading light, I know that they will always hold a special place in my heart. But even as I reflect on the journey that has brought me to this moment, I cannot shake the feeling that our ordeal is far from over. The Skinwalker may have been vanquished, but its legacy lives on in the whispers of the wind and the shadows that dance upon the desert sands. And though I may never fully understand the true nature of the darkness that lurks within our world, I vow to remain vigilant, to protect my community from the forces that seek to do us harm, no matter the cost. With a final glance towards the horizon, I steel myself for the challenges that lie ahead, knowing that with courage and determination, we can overcome any obstacle that stands in our way. For though the road ahead may be long and fraught with peril, I walk it with my head held high, secure in the knowledge that as long as there are those willing to stand against the darkness, the light will never be extinguished. And as the stars twinkle overhead, I offer a silent prayer to the spirits of the land, thanking them for guiding me through the darkness and into the light.